Welcome back to another cool tool show and tell. Today my special guest is Helen Lee. Helen is a creative technologist who specializes in music technology and experimental electronics. She's also the head of community at Crowd Supply, which is a crowdfunding platform for open and ethical hardware products. Helen, thanks for joining us today and what did you bring to show us? Well, I've brought some of my favorite soldering aids um, with me. Um, I think a lot of people talk about their favorite soldering station. I've got a hacko now, um, but I think I prefer the Weller slightly for the record. Um, and I've got a great um, helping hands, which is the magnetic magnetic one with really cool um, wibbly wobbly arms from Hobby Creek. Um, but I thought I would share some of my more unusual uh, soldering tools that I really like to, to keep on my workbench. Um, so one of my favorite tools, which I can't, which I do not shut up about, I absolutely love it, is this spectacular solder sucker. Um, I um, I was an abs I, I first came across this at a um, hackerspace. Uh, somebody brought it with them because the the um, the usual hackerspace soldering desoldering pump was terrible, and I used it, and I have never gone back. Never. I could never go back. It's got this lovely. It's like metal. It's it feels great in your hand. Um, it's got a really satisfying, which I'll demonstrate. Such a nice sound. Um, but it's also got this great silicone tip as well, so you can really smush it in there um, while you're soldering to get a real good, uh, real good uh, suction off of that. So definitely in love with this. This is yeah. a Japanese brand called Engineer, and I can tell by your grin that you're a fan. I am well. a fan. I, I've done a separate video on it because I Have am such you? a fan of this one. Well, I would highly recommend even a beginner solderer get themselves one of these because they will just make your life a lot easier. Yeah. Now they are a little pricier, right? They're around. Yeah, I they're like, like twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. remember starting out being like, ah. Oh, uh, seems like a luxury. Yeah. I don't know if I, I'm, but it, it is worth it. Now, I think the step totally. up from those, I've seen these like solder sucker guns that will like heat up the solder and then have like an actual like vacuum pump. But they're like $200, $300 to get your hands on these. But that's, I, I don't have them, but I've seen them demonstrated yeah. before and be like, wow, that's when I have to, if I ever had to take the solder off of like an entire. Circuit yeah, board. you'd want one of those. Yeah, I've used those. Like I, I, I've like there's been a couple of hacker spaces that I've been part of that had those. Which, and I love them, but like they're not very portable mm. either. You know, so um, yeah, no, definitely amazing step up from your average three dollar fifty solder sucker. Really worth it. Really worth the money. There's that's also a, a, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, but I just oh. have to say on the point of that thing, the the other weird satisfying part of it, aside from the sound that comes out of it is ejecting the solder back yes. out. Oh it's, my God, that's so fun. It's like Those little pellets solder of suckers. Yeah, it's like little <laughs> little mouse poops that come out of it yeah. or something. It's, it's, They're just anyway. joyful. They're wonderful. Yeah. I fully agree. I can't little believe I didn't mention that core piece of functionality there. The crazy <laughs> little silver pellets you get. They're really fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's, the, that's my solder sucker. I love that. Um, another one that I um, persuade um, students um, when I do teach them soldering to use instead of the sponge, is just a, a metal this is a hacker one um but make again making that switch from from like the sad little sponge you get in beginner soldering kits to a wire a proper wire um wire ball and they're not expensive i think you can get them for like three or four dollars even but you know throw that disgusting sponge away and start using one of these and you're going to see an increase in the life of the tips of your your soldering iron and just just general general happiness in your life if you just throw away that sponge i agree and the hacker one is the prettiest one the one that you've got it there is, is like the golden obviously. c3po it one. looks if you turn it around this way it kind of looks it reminds me of um well it just reminds me a little bit of um nikolai tesla's funerary urn if you've ever seen that <laughs> i've not it's but golden, i believe you. I've, I've been i've been to belgrade um at, which is where his um it's like weird it's like half engineering place half weird shrine to tesla um and his funerary urn and where his ashes are kept and this is this giant golden orb uh, it looks a bit like well yeah it looks like a bit it like this seems appropriate <laughs> that he, he would have yeah. a, a soldering you know tip cleaner as his <laughs> yeah the other one that i enjoy which I don't know if this is controversial, but it's like the ashtray style one <laughs> yes. that also has the brass little plug on it. But these I find don't move around on me quite as much as that Hacko one. Every time I kind of, but I've seen a lot of 3D printed stands for that Hacko one. So if you wanted to like make it a permanent part 
of your desktop, you could probably 3D print something to yeah. hold it. I mean, the way. Astro ones are slightly more practical, um, but in this, I was fully driven by. I just think it looks prettier. It does look really, really, really <laughs> right. good. I mean, look at my workbench. It's it's uh, it's it, you know I buy things sometimes based on you know attractiveness as well as functionality, which is why I like the Wallow over the Hacko. Actually, I think the Hacko is actually slightly better in terms of its functionality, but it's just ugly comparatively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get blasted. We'll, yeah, we'll get comments on that one. Yeah, I, don't know. I know, right? Like, oh my god, who is this? <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. Well, I like it. Life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this my my um, my next one that I wanted to say about was um, this one. Um, it's a lovely little thing I keep on my desk. It's called a pan of ice, mm -hmm. and it's the mini one. So I do love my soldering station, but sometimes when you've got something that you need to apply a bit more pressure to, or is like a you know PCB soldering as well, like these can be a much more stable, much nicer option because you can really like get like a good purchase on these so these come with like holes so you can and i'm th once my workbench is fully arranged i probably will drill it into my workbench so you can like have it like be really solid but even just sat on the bench like this um is good enough for me to be able to exert a, a decent amount of pressure while i'm soldering and uh, if i if i need to um or if i'm just being lazy you know um, so I do, I do love the pan of ice. It's um, definitely a well-used piece, and it's got a really great um, rotation, and so you can get it into all sorts of funny, um, funny angles. You can get at at your PCB. So if you if you do a lot of PCB soldering, would recommend getting yourself a pan of vise. Now, is that that particular clamp that you have the board in? Is that an extra, or is that like because I know pan of ice has all different flavors oh, and different things. Yeah, I mean, like, pan of are relatively pricey. This is the entry level one because I'm not made of money. But, like, yeah, so this is this has got a clamp jaw and it goes in, you know, it's just a, a twisty twisty. Mm -hmm. um, but it's got a number of different, uh, so you've got two Vs there um, and then you've got um, another one there as well. So you've got a number of different options for clamping your your PCB in nice and securely. And the reason I put this one in it because it's qu it's quite an unusual shaped PCB. Um, and it's still you know like and, and you know increasingly so with um, these kind of like artistic PCBs you're seeing more and more unconventional shapes. But um, the pan of ice has handled every weird shaped PCB that I've thrown at it the, figuratively. The badge life <laughs> appropriate PCB holder. Exactly, right? right? Um, no, no, I like them, and they, they don't take up too much space on your workbench as well. And like when they're not in use, they don't look cluttered. So definitely, definitely, the pan device is a great option. Um, and then the final thing that I wanted to talk about was this really adorable solder holder, um, <laughs> which might, which might seem like why do you need a solder holder? Well, you, you don't need one. You don't need a solder holder. You can just leave it on your, your workbench. But it keeps it super nice and tidy. Your solder never gets tangled. You're not like searching for things and you can just pull them off like one handed. And then you've got your um, you've got your piece of solder to work with if you want, or you can just do it direct from the reel if it's close enough. But it's it takes up to a kilo of solder in here. This is, um, oh wait, what do you call that? I don't know, like two point something pounds, isn't it? Sure. Um, but it will hold up to a, a, you know, that's a lot of solder. That's yeah, a lot of solder. That, that'll you know, last I don't you expect, a while. Yeah, well, this one's not a kilo. This one's, uh, this is a one pound. This is one pound of solder. And you can still see that there's like plenty of room. So, um, yeah. You can even get, if you're the kind of person who uses solders with multiple thicknesses of solder, this, you'll see that this is very thin, fine solder because I do quite a lot of small work. Um, I have to say, of all the things you showed yeah. me so far, that is the one I'm the most envious of because for whatever <sighs> reason, I've gone this long, I'm still holding the spool, I just pull it out of the drawer and then I try to wind some off yeah. and, and get it, it, it that, not only does that seem like a cleaner approach, yeah, it is. but I've seen people who use the solder holders and the little, the, the little guide that's in front of them mm -hmm. to almost hold the solder and bring the item to oh, the really? solder instead of bringing the solder like itself to the item and it seems like wizardry to me it's like it's 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 all inverted but mm. also it seems like a much uh less toxic way maybe to to handle the solder to be yeah. able to bring the work to it so like reducing your handling of it is, is great but also yeah it's just convenient and you just always know where your solder is and it's it even got a little go rolling handle. off the table 
No, it's even got a little handle that so you can just you know just grab it and. Do you remember how much know, you spent on it or, or where you got it? I know we'll include links in the, in the description for all the um, stuff. Yeah, but. I bought this from Adafruit. It was I bought all of these things from Adafruit actually. All um, I think. Um, but the because uh, I'd rather put money in their pocket than uh, Jeff Bezos's pocket, you know. Um, the solder holder I can't quite remember. I think it was like fifteen bucks. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems like the kind of item that you'll have forever. Mm. It's not a... Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's made of, you know, it's like full metal. This is like powdered. This isn't plastic. This is powdered, uh, probably steel or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I put a piece of... A, it's got the brand name on it. Here we are. Look, I just hid it with some electrical tape. <laughs> there we are. So, Atem TJ227. Yeah, yeah, they you make, can, they you can make buy one layer or two too. layers of them. Do yeah. they? Yeah. I'll try those. Yeah, so so those are my favorite soldering accessories. Um, I think uh, I think everybody should get at least one of the engineer desoldering pumps Absolutely. in particular. And I'll I'll since we're we're con I'm going to contribute one more item here too while oh, we're talking yes. about it cuz it Let's... saved me from making a separate video on it. Amazing. And talking about purchases that I put off for way too long for no good reason is a fume extractor. I found this one. This one's called the <laughs> Kato, K O T T O. Yeah, I've um, just got myself one too. Yeah, it's I haven't put it this one yet. wasn't so much. I, I want to say one. it was maybe around twenty bucks or something. Uh, it plugs right in um, to mains, and it's got a little switch on the side. It's basically a PC fan with like a carbon filter on the front yeah. that you can pop out. Uh, like I, I feel like I was talking myself out of getting them for so long because they seemed expensive mm. or there's there's so many diy options out there i just told yeah. myself i'd make one for yeah, a while yeah. and i never did uh but for for a small price it, it, it has kind of like a nice ikea minimalist look to it uh, it's a it's a pair of google eyes away from being a, my little solder buddy that's uh, really cool but i'm glad i picked it up and now now i feel a little bit better every time i, I just bought one as well i haven't put it together yet um it's on my workbench right there um it's actually an open source um smart sol uh, like a it's a it's a solder um this collector same yeah. as yours right um but it's open source and it's got like some um it, it will automatically turn things on and off and you know um but I haven't used it yet, but it looks really cool. It's by this guy called Leon Anavi, who is like a, I think he's from an Eastern European open hardware hacker. Um, so I've been, I've been, uh, been um, I'm pretty excited about trying it out. We'll have to compare notes on uh, solder extractors. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll <laughs> want to link for that too, see if we can. Yeah, yeah. That. Now, what yeah. else have you been up to recently, Alan? Oh, wow. So um, I've recently started a new job. I've just moved to the US. I've immigrated to the US. I just I was in Berlin before um, and originally I'm British, as you probably guessed from the accent. Um, and I started a job at CrowdSupply, which is a, a crowdfunding website for open source and ethical hackery style um, stuff, <laughs> projects, right? <laughs> Um, like, you know, open source laptop or whatever Bunny Huang is working on, <laughs> <laughs> right, essentially. Um, and in terms of my personal work, I've been um, trying to set up my workbench. Um, I've been doing a lot of musical instrument making. I'm actually working on a new book at the moment about DIY musical instruments, which will be out later this year. Um, all about experimental controllers, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I did actually do a, a, a book before in the maker world. I did a I did a children's book on craft and electronics called the Crafty Kids Guide to DIY Electronics, and I wrote that with an advisory board of 150 girls. Um, <laughs> so it's like a female coded um, introduction, like very very basic introduction to the concepts of electronics through craft. That was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, new job writing books, um, making instruments, and uh, attempting to not be, you know, too horrifically depressed because of, you know, everything. <laughs> that can be difficult. I can, yeah, I, the right. struggle is there, for yeah, real. Yeah, the struggle um, is now, real. You had mentioned possibly that you were getting something else off the ground. Was there... Oh, yes, that's true. I am. I'm, I'm actually starting a new live stream. Um, so I'm going to be, for, for work work, for my, you know, day job at Crowdsupply. Um, 
I'm going to be starting, it's going to be called the Teardown Sessions, and I'll be do going, and it'll be me and a different hardware creator each time, and they'll be doing, uh, they'll be giving me a guided tour of their piece of technology while I get it up and running and start making a project. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to <laughs> be really fun. That sounds great. Yeah, 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 that's going to be, oh, it's going to, it's quite scary. It's going to start in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah. Cool. And people can find out about that through following Crowd Supply, or yeah, is there they can a way? so they can subscribe to Crowd Supply on YouTube, or they can follow um, us on Crowd Supply on Twitter, or they can just follow me because I'll talk about it as well. And I'm Helen Lee, L E I G H. So yeah, great. Well, Helen, <laughs> thanks again for joining us today. Uh, all great recommendations, and uh, if you've made it this far, you can find links for everything that Helen's talked about down mm -hmm. in the description. And you can find thousands of reader-recommended tools like these at cool-tools.org. Thanks again, Helen. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you had fun. It was great yeah. to talk to you.